Hadrian, the first emperor with a beard. Some people in the West kind of pretend that they are, in fact, somehow uh, Japanese. Hadrian pretended that he was Greek. Uh, he even had a beard, uh, like a Greek philosopher or whatever. It is usually reported that Hadrian wasn't popular. Uh, people didn't like him. The Senate was more or less okay with him, or at least never openly confronted the emperor, who at that point became quite an authoritarian ruler and never relied on the Senate that much. It is understandable that apparently nobody liked that uh, it was sometimes hard to reach this man, especially since he was constantly traveling. Like, literally, he was never home. His court was more or less moving with him. Rome was no longer the capital of the state. The capital was in the tent of this nomadic emperor. He suppressed the revolts in Dacia and Judea, uh, where he founded Ilia Capitolina, a city which later uh, was renamed to Jerusalem. Uh, but other than that, uh, Hadrian's reign was mostly peaceful. Uh, probably even too peaceful. For various reasons, he returned some of the territories conquered by Trajan uh, back to Parthens. He built an incredible amount of architectural wonders. Uh, the best is obviously the reconstructed pantheon, originally by Agrippa. Nobody has a clue how they constructed this enormous dome. That's the 19th century level of technology. Stuff like Egyptian pyramids is a joke compared to the complexity of Pantheon. But he didn't stop there. Some of the most famous Roman structures were built under Hadrian, uh, which includes uh, Hadrian's villa in Tivoli and the mausoleum of Hadrian, which later became the residence of uh, Pope. Like, yeah, the head of the Christian church chose the crypt as his residence. Uh, he also supposedly defied his lover Antinos, uh, which led to a creation of an unbelievable amount of his stations that flooded the entire world and possibly even a couple of nearby planets. You probably expect Hadrian's Wall in this list, uh, but, well, some wall is attributed to Hadrian in Historia Augusta, and there is a number of questions concerning this structure. Hadrian had no children, and he followed the tradition and decided to adopt someone capable as his successor in Caesar, the junior emperor. He chose uh, Lucius Sionius Commodus, but he died. So Hadrian had to play this game of let's choose a decent human being for the emperor once again. He devised a plan so convoluted uh, that it looks a bit like an invention of the historians. He chose a couple of promising kids who could potentially become good rulers uh, someday. The first one was the son of his recently deceased nominated successor. Uh, his name was also Lucius Sionius Commodus, and he was like uh, seven years old. Uh, the second was Marcus Annius Verus, a 16-year-old kid of exemplary behavior and philosophical inclinations. Uh, Hadrian called him Verissimus, the most true. Uh, he was a very, very distant relative of his wife. Uh, since both of these promising kids were very young, uh, he needed a grown-up caretaker, so to speak. Uh, he chose the former proconsul of Italia and Asia, an all-around nice guy, uh, Titus Aurelius Fulvus Antoninus. And he told him that he would adopt him as his heir if uh, Antoninus would in turn adopt the two kids. And one of them, Marcus, was actually his nephew. Antoninus agreed. Later in his life, uh, Hadrian became quite ill and couldn't tolerate it anymore. He became quite suicidal and numerous times asked to kill him. Eventually, he probably killed himself, or as Cassius Dio reports, by indulging in unsuitable foods and drinks met his death. 
He was deified by Antoninus, although the Senate apparently was not crazy about uh, this decision. 